So let's look at the language basics of PHP. Now, when you're learning any new language, there tends to be a list of things that any seasoned programmer would look at. Um, and that's this list here. So we're going to look at about half of these today, um, or maybe a bit more. So let's start off at the very top. All this stuff is in the PHP programming book or any of the PHP programming books that I've talked about. So uh, let's start off. Um, we're going to work, up, work our way through these first four. Um, how do we actually embed PHP in web pages? Well, to do this, what we do is we wrap up our PHP code using uh, this notation here. We use a less than symbol and a question mark with PHP to indicate the start of a PHP block or the start of a PHP sentence as a statement. And then we use a question mark and a greater than symbol to indicate the end of the block. And between those two points, you can have PHP code. Now it has to just be PHP code. What you can't do is you can't start putting HTML or other things in that gap. When this is passed to the web server, when it identifies a PHP block, what will happen is every single part of this will be processed as if it's PHP. So if there's anything else in there, you'll get an error message because it'll go, this isn't PHP, I don't know what it actually is. Now you can lay your PHP out in whatever ways you like and wait white space, you know, the sort of gaps that you put in by pressing the space bar by using the tab tends to be ignored. Uh, tends to be, there are some cases where it won't be ignored, but in PHP, it tends to be ignored. So you can lay your statements out in whatever way you like, but you know, the tip would be always to lay it out so it's readable. We'll talk about that in a bit more in a minute. So let's have a look at uh, the legendary first program that everybody always starts off with. And that's the Hello World program. So here's the HTML and you can see the PHP block down here. I've highlighted it in red. So I've got a starting PHP statement with a less than a question mark and PHP. And then I've got this statement here, print Hello World. And what this is going to do is it will print a value at that point into the HTML document before the document is passed back to the uh, browser. So in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a series of characters. And that series of characters here are the characters H-E-L-L-O space W-O-R-L-L-D exclamation mark. And if we want to print a series of characters, we wrap them up in quotes, and that's called a string. Now, uh, PHP enables us to do sort of dynamic processing. So what we can do is we can actually calculate values or find values or do all sorts of actions. So changing that program slightly, what we could do is we could put a second print statement in. And what we could do is say print, and we could put some maths in here, we could go six times five. And what will happen is that will be calculated and the result will be printed out um, after hello world. Now note how I've um, put two lines here. I lay them down the page and I put a semicolon at the end of each line. What the semicolon is actually doing is it's separating the statements. Now there are other ways of actually embedding PHP. Some of these are older ways of doing it. Some of them are used in other languages as well. The favored way of doing it is to use the question mark PHP uh, style of embedding PHP. If you do pick up an older book, you might see some of these older styles out there, but really, this is the way we're going to be doing it, question mark PHP. Now you can have as many PHP blocks as you like. So you can see here, I've got four PHP blocks highlighted in red. What will happen is all those blocks will be processed before the page is sent back to the client, back to the browser. And they're processed from top to bottom. So obviously the first PHP block between the HTML and the head will be processed first then the one between the head and the title will be processed second, etc., just like that. Now, as I've indicated, we use a semicolon to separate the statements out. The final one, theoretically, you don't actually have to put a semicolon on that, but my advice would always be put the semicolons in, because what can happen is you add a fourth statement, you forget you haven't got a semicolon at the end of the third line, then you get an error message. So the tip is always 
lay them out like this. Put one statement on every line and make sure that you have semicolons at the end of the statements. There are some bits of PHP where you don't put the semicolon, but in most cases, and in the kind of things we'll be looking at this week and next week, you'll be putting those semicolons in. So um, you can lay them out in any way you want. You know, sometimes programmers just put all the statements on a single line, or they lay them out in particular ways like this, as I've indicated. Lay them out line after line. That's my preferred way of doing it. And you'll find that it's actually easier to read when you're getting into these things and trying to find out what's going wrong, which inevitably happens. So let's talk about case sensitivity. There are lots of words inside PHP. And one of the words that you've already seen, for example, is print. Now, um, PHP has got lots of words that are built in. All the built-in words and keystrokes are case insensitive. Uh, names we make up are case sensitive. I'll talk a bit more about names we make up at a later point, but let's just focus on the built-in keystrokes and con um, built-in constructs and keywords. They're case insensitive. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, let's have a look at an example. Have a look at these three print statements. Now, you can see one of them is in lowercase, the first one. Second one is all in uppercase. And third one uses a weird mixture of lower and uppercase. Now, because these are a built-in um, a built-in word built into the language of PHP, um, this is case insensitive. So all three of these commands are exactly the same thing. It's the print statement. And what will happen is when this runs, it will actually print three statements out. Now I don't recommend that you do it like this. I think that in fact you'd be better off actually using lower case for all of the reserved words that are inside the PHP language. So you can see if you run that, that would actually produce uh, three print statements. I'll just briefly mention names that we define are case sensitive. So words that we make up, uh, you have to be consistent. And that's really important when you're programming, trying to be consistent. Um, so in these instances, these would be three different names. Value in lowercase would be different to value in uppercase. That's really the difference between built-in words in PHP and words that we make up. And we'll talk a bit more about uh, names that we define at a later point.